Hello and welcome back to No Bullshit. Today we return to talking about the ongoing shenanigans surrounding this month's celebration of women's history. March kicked off with International Women's Day just last week, and a pro-female anti-male bias has been spreading like wildfire online ever since. For example, in our last video, we discussed a new commercial from Nissan, the car maker, who not only feature one of the most woke and pro-female figureheads of the modern feminist movement, Brie Larson, but also this car company's new commercial had SJW-influenced pro-women's rhetoric baked right into the promo video itself. It basically started off with a girl getting passed up on a promotion at work, and then Brie Larson shows up in a Nissan car and drives her around town like a crazy person, and then tells the worker not to compromise or some shit. I'm not kidding, this was the actual commercial Nissan went with. And needless to say, it was cringe as hell. And the timing of it is, of course, very intentional. This pro-female promo came out at the beginning of Women's Month on purpose. Just like how a bunch of other awkward pro-lady stuff has been spreading online too, which we're about to go over today, of course. But before we jump into it, let me just give you this preface for good measure. This is of course not an attack or slam against women coming from me. I love women, in fact. And more accurately, this is just me pointing out how silly this whole Women's History Month is, and the people surrounding it. And also, we're going to talk through things and point out why a lot of what they're saying is wrong, biased, and they have bad arguments or worse, too. Many are are using this opportunity to not only prop up women, but also, and most notoriously, they're using this situation as an opportunity to beat down men. Not cool. Us men aren't even allowed to have our own month. And if we did, we would certainly get shit on for bashing women during it. But for some reason, call it liberal double standards. Well, they're allowed to be anti-male. In fact, they're sometimes encouraged to. And I get this sneaking suspicion a lot of this pro-female stuff is more concerned with bashing dudes than propping up girls. And this whole situation is also another great example of why it's okay when liberals do it, at least according to them. For example, let's start with something simple. Here's a tweet from Twitter.com themselves. They own and operate and regulate the Twitter social media platform. And on Sunday, March 8th, Twitter decided to send out this post from their official account saying, not today meant. Short but sweet, I guess, but it also really says a lot. First, it shows the hypocrisy I was referencing before. I mean, do you really think Twitter Twitter would send out a post that said, not today women, during a potential men's month? Not a chance. Again, not only can men not have a month for ourselves, but if we did, bashing women and telling them not today would clearly not be allowed. We would be called sexist bigots by swaths of leftists online if we did that, surely. And more likely, if someone tweeted out not today women, they would get flagged, banned, and kicked off the internet for life. And they'd probably get fired from their jobs and their bank accounts would get frozen too. And the other thing this tweet shows is, how this Women's Month is actually more about telling off the men. And this is coming from the top here too, at least in terms of tech and social media. Twitter itself is sending this out and they're tweeting, not today men. And that's pretty much comparable to, say, YouTube posting a video themselves and lying and saying all men are sexist. Or you could compare it to Facebook creating their own Facebook group called Believe All Women and using it as a way to bash men and get us fired from our jobs. All for, say, innocently talking, joking, or maybe daring to flirt at work. I think you guys get the point. Next, we have a company called Catalyst Inc. who has a tweet of them getting in on this Women's Day stuff too. Here they say, unconscious gender bias has been holding women back for far too long. This International Women's Day joined the Bias Correct campaign. And below this is also a little video complaining about so-called gendered insults women receive in public, I guess. For example, here we see this lady was called a nag apparently, which begs the question, was she in fact nagging people? Or was this lady in the next picture being emotional? Or the next one, were they bossy? Because if these adjectives were true and accurate, then calling these people that isn't exactly groundbreaking or offensive. If you're bossy in public or with your friends or at work, someone might call you on that. Doesn't matter what your gender is. And it has nothing to do with being a male or female. Bossy people get called bossy, just like how emotional people get called that too. So with that said, I'm not entirely sure where this post and its so-called unconscious bias angle is going. Really, I just see this as a way for SJWs to call you biased or sexist, even if you're not trying to be or not doing anything at all and not showing any bias at all. Basically, this is like when Anita Sarkeesian said, everything is sexist and everything is racist because SJWs think things really are. And apparently now everyone is biased. Well, at least everyone besides them is biased, according to the left. How convenient. Next, we're going to move on to seeing a couple of Democratic politicians that had things to say about Women's Month too. We're going to talk about two so-called squad members who 
decided to chime in on this, and their takes are just as cringy or perhaps much worse. First, we got Ilhan Omar here, congresswoman from Minnesota, and she's saying this on Twitter, respect black women, believe black women, elect black women. Hashtag International Women's Day. Well, I personally think we shouldn't be treating people a certain way based on skin color. In fact, that used to be called racism. And the way I do it is, I'd rather meet a person, get to know them specifically and their personality, and then I'll judge them based on that and their actions. Really, skin color is far from the most important or interesting thing about a person. Well, most people, that is. You see, for race-obsessed, boring, and useless Democrats like Ilhan Omar, her race really is important to her because her identity is all she has going for her. She's got no personality, no special hobbies or interests or anything going for her. Basically, her being black, Muslim, liberal, and progressive is pretty much the only reason Omar got elected. And it's why we see her propped up by the mainstream media too. It has nothing to do with her herself, her personality, accomplishments, skills, or plans. Nope, Omar is black and that's about it. And she could be swapped out with anyone else quite easily if they had the same feature. And while most people need more than that too, many low IQ Democrats don't. And that's why we're seeing posts like this saying we should respect, believe, and elect black women just because. Just because of their identity and that's the identity the liberals support. Now lastly, let's pull a switcheroo again here and see if this post would fly if we invert things. Could we get away with saying respect white men, believe white men, and elect white men? International White Male Day? Because I don't think so. And I'm sure Ilhan Omar would be the first one to unironically and hypocritically call you a racist if you chose to say something like that. Not that I would necessarily want to say something that silly anyway, but it is interesting and a good thought experiment that obliterates left-wing narratives pretty effectively, and quite quickly too, I might add. Moving forward, we got another cringy B-level squad member and Democratic representative to go over. Next, it's Rashida Tlaib, and she had some interesting video clips going around about her last week, coming from a pro-women's speech and rally that seemed to be getting overexcited and a little out of hand. Check out this video first and see for yourself, and then we'll discuss. My, 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 are they obsessed with our bodies, how we talk, how we look, what we stand for? I mean, this type of policing of our bodies is so interconnected to all the social justice movements all around the country. I represent the third poorest congressional district in the country. This issue is an economic justice issue. This issue is a racial justice issue. Well, Rashida, I hate to break it to you, but I highly doubt anyone was ever obsessed with your body. No offense, and no one saying politicians necessarily need to be super attractive or anything, but come on. Rashida Tlaib is the worst looking one in the squad, and two of its four members are ladies without hair. Just saying. And more about Rashida's ego and assumed attractiveness later, as she'll reference it again again soon. But first, let's talk about all this social justice nonsense she's trying to ram down into this speech. Social justice, economic justice, justice for women, and what have you. These progressives have really ruined that word justice, haven't they? And ironically enough, as we've seen time and time again, these jokers aren't about justice or fairness much at all. Sure, they argue and fight for things under the guise of wanting to make them fair, but in actuality, they want women and minorities to get special treatment. That's why the previous squad member Omar was trying trying to get justice for black women. Or more accurately, she was trying to get her and her group special treatment and votes, despite their policies or personalities or whatever. And now Rashida Tlaib is asking for special treatment for all women, because she's one of them and that would benefit her directly and greatly. Gosh, these Democrats are so shallow and transparent and petty and self-centered too. Anyone else would realize that advocating for yourself and your own specific group too much can come across as biased, favoring, unfair, and possibly corrupt, especially if if you're a politician. And that's why normal people in politics will support their own groups in more low-key ways, while also targeting outside groups specifically in order to garner a more fair and community-based image. This is why, for example, white politicians try and pander to black communities. Or for another example, let's say we have a Mexican mayor in a city in California who would surely rile up his own Hispanic base, but he also might be careful not to look too pro-Mexican, because that will inevitably alienate other groups of voters who he might need to win elections. And this is why politicians like this will then also reach out specifically and say, for example, with this Mexi mayor, he might have some event trying to pander to another outside group to him, like say advertising and holding an election party with all the Jewish people in his town. This would show the mayor is there for the whole city, not just the people who are the same background as him. And that's the kind of thing a real and rational politician would do to grow his base and community. But today, with modern Democrats, particularly these squad members, well, they could care less 
about reaching out to anyone. In fact, they actively attack and bash other groups, anyone who's not a liberal minority female just like them. Let me tell you this obsession with our bodies. You know, I in the legislature, in the Michigan legislature for six years, used to say people to people, yo, yo, you know what? You're so freaking obsessed with what I decide to do with my body. Maybe you shouldn't even want to have sex with me or with you or with any woman. Oh, uh, Rashida, could you tone down that rhetoric just a little bit there? I guess this event is higher energy than we can see from this clip because for some reason, all the videos coming from there have people yelling like maniacs. And as for people supposedly wanting to sleep with you, Rashida. Well, citation needed. Otherwise, I'm going to have to press X for doubt on that one. I know I don't think there's enough rum on this planet to get me tipsy enough to consider sleeping with someone like this. I mean, I know some guys are dogs and will hook up with anything, but Rashida really does seem to think rather highly for herself, all things considered. Reminds me of those basic kinds of girls who always think everyone wants to sleep with them, even though it's mostly just in their heads. Some guy could pick up a pen they dropped at a restaurant and girls like Rashida would go, Oh my god, that guy's totally trying to get into my pants. Not really though. And regardless, I think someone may need to take one for the team here and bite the bullet and go to bed with Rashida. She's clearly been on a dry spell and she has intercourse on her mind a lot, which can be seen from this speech. And it's likely because she hasn't gotten any since divorcing her husband back in 2015. He can be seen in this picture here, so now we all know the caliber of man Rashida lets get into her nether regions. But yeah, maybe if she got a good lay once in a while, it could cure her bad Bad mood and anger spells. Rashida has been known to be the most unhinged, angry, out of control, radical, and crazy leftist there is, almost of all of them, at least within the squad and most of the democratic, regressive, progressive party. Next, let's wrap things up today by looking at a video of another speaker at this same pro-women's event Rashida was just speaking at. Here, an actress speaks up, her name, Busy Phillips, dumb name by the way, and well, here she tells a pretty interesting story with a lot of vigor, while also yelling and looking like more more of a crazy person than Rashida, believe it or not. Check this clip out. It's in my beautiful office of my own late night talk show. Soon I would be driving my hybrid car to my beautiful, to kiss my two beautiful and healthy children and my husband who had taken the year off to parent so I could focus on my career. Sounds like your husband is a bit of a simp. And boy, oh boy, could you imagine having to listen to this unhinged wackadoo go off on you every night at home? I'm getting scared and I'm just watching her on the internet. And it looks like she might be on something here too. Pills maybe or some kind of narcotic? I don't know. She does seem a little over the top and emotional, not naturally. And she does this weird tongue move at the beginning that made me think something might be up with her. And then there's just the craziness of all this, of the situation, the event, and what she's saying and how. She's yelling, barely coherent, and going off on God knows what. It's really quite the sight to see. Also, by the way, the talk show she mentioned hosting there, it got canceled after one season. And as far as Busy Phillips focusing on her career, well, while I won't argue she has had some success in acting, and I've even enjoyed her work on a few projects, I'll admit, but at the same time, she's not exactly this high-level world famous, super respectable actress. She's not that talented either. She's just a pretty face. And in fact, I think most people watching this show and video right now, you couldn't pick Busy out of a lineup. Nor could you name any project, TV show, or movie she's ever been in. The only thing I can remember she was even in was the cult classic TV show Freaks and Geeks. But that project came and went over 20 years ago. Come on, lady. What have you done for us lately? And not to get too sidetracked with her floundering C-level Hollywood career, but this point does become more important later when you consider what she's about to say next. And I have all of this, all of it, because, because, because I was allowed bodily autonomy at 15. Jesus Christ, lady, you got rid of a baby of yours at 15 years old? That's pretty harsh and kind of dark, especially considering you're basically bragging about it now in current year. Over two decades later, and that kid would have been 25 years old by now, but nope. Instead, Busy needed to continue her terribly unimpressive acting career, going on to perform in such unforgettable movies like White Chicks, starring the Waynes brothers cross-dressing as white girls. And also, Busy just just 
had to save up and buy herself an electric car and a Malibu mansion. What a joke. And what a heinous thing to say in such a cold and odd way. This lady is literally yelling as hard as she can while she awkwardly licks her mouth and stuff like we said earlier. Could it be the drugs talking then or is it just this girl's ego? Or perhaps this left-leaning side of her mixing with the growing SJW silliness in the world today, it's really taking its toll. They've turned this woman who used to be a nice-looking, fine-seeming individual and now she's bragging about getting rid of babies so she can get rich and buy things she doesn't need. While making inane Hollywood drivel, no one can even remember happened a few years later. What do you guys think? Is this Woman's History Month thing getting out of hand? We're only about a week and a half into March too, so who knows what else will happen. And also, don't you think this is a great example of it's okay when liberals do it? Because I'm seeing lots of hypocrisy and double standards right here. Tell me what you think and comment your thoughts on everything below. And thanks for watching No Bullshit today. Hit that like button to help support this channel and we'll see y'all next time.